For this first case, we have a 48-year-old man with sudden right hearing loss. Here are our images. On the left, you have a diffusion-weighted image. On the right, you have a thin slice, highly T2-weighted image that says uh, Fiesta or Cis. Take a look at that. Remember the context of the history. Have a few more images for you here. These are pre and post contrast. So try to think of your diagnosis, try to come up with a differential. Your first question is, what is the most likely diagnosis? Your second question is, which of these nerves is least likely to have a schwannoma? So you see, this is one of those typical ABR questions that kind of gives away the answer on the second one. So you have some cranial nerves to choose from. Right in this case, what we're looking at is a vestibular schwannoma. Uh, this is an extraaxial mass of the cerebellopontine angle involving the IEC. These are tumors arising from the myelin producing cells, most commonly along the vestibular nerve. On post-contrast imaging, you tend to have avidly enhancing lesions. Sometimes they'll have areas of necrosis. The best way to differentiate these from a meningioma are involvement of the IEC and expansion of the IEC. They also tend to be slightly more heterogeneous than meningiomas, although that's not a reliable sign. So here you see the images that we had. Uh, you have a mass in the right IEC here. It's kind of this pedunculated or mushroom-shaped mass coming out of the IEC. Here on the T2, you see it's involving the IEC, some expansion of the porous acousticus there, and then a significant portion coming into the cerebellopontine angle. Here you have pre and post contrast images. On pre contrast, it's very close to gray matter or the adjacent brain parenchyma, so you don't see a whole lot. On post contrast, you see avid enhancement here, pretty homogeneous, but you do have some areas of central uh, low intensity there that are probably some areas of cystic degeneration or necrosis. This is a general flow chart that I use when I'm considering cerebellopontine angle masses. If you follow this approach, you'll be able to come up with a useful differential most of the time and uh, even get to your most likely diagnosis. First, think about whether your mass is solid or cystic. When you have a solid mass, your two choices really are schwannoma and meningioma. Schwannomas tend to have those internal cystic areas that we saw in this case. They also tend to be centered in and expand the IEC like you saw in this case. On the other hand, meningiomas tend to enhance more homogeneously and they will often have calcification associated with them or hyperostosis. For the cerebellopontine angle cystic masses, your main differential is arachnoid cyst and epidermoid. Arachnoid cysts are going to follow CSF on all sequences, whereas epidermoids have a dirty CSF type of appearance, which uh, incompletely suppresses on flare, maybe not quite as dark as CSF on T1, and then most importantly, these epidermoids have reduced diffusion, so they'll be very bright on diffusion weighted imaging. So here are your question, your second question, uh, which of these nerves is least likely to have a schwannoma? So you may recognize that the optic nerve does not have Schwann cells because they are myelinated by oligodendroglyocytes, as is the rest of the CNS. Uh, these other cranial nerves do have Schwann cells. Uh, the most common is going to be the vestibular nerve, which is why we don't call these acoustic neuromas anymore. You can also get these in the trigeminal and facial nerve as well.